there, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, shopper boys, mad boys, and esteemed guests. Welcome back. Well, welcome back. Welcome to episode one of the Grimzag Scrapyard. Uh, I had a hard think about what we should be working on today. It's first episode. It's kind of a, a benchmark. Um, and the problem is I've got so many bleeding projects now that there's, there's almost too much choice. There, I've got something like 12 or 13 super heavies around here for various armies that are all incomplete. Um, I've bought whole board games of miniatures that need painting, some classic, some are more recent. Uh, that That's not even looking at the fancy roleplay miniatures I bought or the models I bought for collections rather than actual armies. Uh, so yeah, for it, it was a tough decision to decide where to start. So I figured let's start. Let's start simple. Um, as I was rummaging through Bitsbox trying to clear some of these guys that I had no intention of working on, uh, I found this guy. Um, classic war boss. I'm pretty certain I picked him up in a rummage box at a local game store. They had sort of a, a bits box where you pay by weight, like a pick and mix type deal. Um, the only thing is, he was missing a shooter arm and the head of his chopper. So the first time around when I got him home, I replaced the head of his chopper with his Ogre Kingdom's blade. Uh, it looks pretty cool. It's, it's about the right size. He's pointing it. It's got a it's got a nice weight to it. Um, I didn't manage to find a good match for his missing arm. Well, that was years ago, and today is his lucky day, because he's just been bumped to the head of my to-do list. Uh, I have a lot of orcs. A lot, a lot of orcs. Uh, split between four armies, I'm pretty sure at last count they came to more than 20,000 points. And that was in 8th edition, and I've continued to add to them since then. I really, really don't need more orcs. But, come on, we all need more orcs. Uh, so first up, we'll deal with the arm problem. Uh, since the last time I looked at him, I have uh, got myself a 3D printer. So that's where we're going to start. I'm, I'm not too fussed about the restoration side of uh, dealing with this guy. I want to convert him. If his arm looks like it fits, then that's fine by me. It doesn't have to be exact for his original. Um, and with the access to the 3D printer, it gives me a lot of play with different creators to find something that I think fits, so that I can rescale um, and, and make perfect for this job. So you can see here that a couple of the, the arms that I printed off actually had some issues with them, they weren't weren't ideal, they, they had uh, damage or shearing. Um, I'm still learning how to use the printer properly, so that's fine. It, most of them will be alright um, for what they are, I just do refine processes. Uh, I also noticed when I was sorting out that there appears to be a, an issue with scaling. Whilst they're all about the right length, they, they're they much thicker than the existing arm on the body. Several of them, that's an issue as they're bare arms, but there was one that has this heavily armoured, um, the an exoskeleton. It looks like he's wearing partial mega armour, which is fine. Uh, it, it still works on his, where his shoulder connects. A little bit of trimming, it'll be fine. It's going to look slightly oversized, but he's a big hulky um, war boss. He needs some big weapons. Fair enough. It also has the benefit of giving him a shooter weapon instead of just having bladed weapons. Several of the several of the items I had were like power claws, which is fine. I could have modified them so that they had gun arms instead. It's but for this guy, having it mounted on the back of his fist, simple conversion, he's a simple an arm swap. Um, 
and it, is, it can literally be a, a chopped and done. So once we've decided on that, the other bits will go back in the bits box. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely find later, I always do. There's many orcs, there's always room for extra arms and weaponry. The here case of tidying it up, trim it down. So I had a quick rummage through the um, bits box and actually found this banner pole that looks like it's going to fit quite nicely with a backpack. He doesn't really need a backpack, but the original one has um, going to be a, a quick case of trimming it. So once this is tidied up, I'll attach this to the backpack, a little bit of super glue, a little bit of activ activator spray uh, to speed the process up. Uh, same with the arm. We'll get them for a... I'm going to use a grey undercoat just purely because it keeps a nice balance. Although I still don't know what colour scheme we're going with on this guy. It It's a middle of the road undercoat. So on to the main painting, we're, um, I'm going to be honest, I'm not, uh, I'm not a huge fan of airbrushing, not because, uh, actually it's probably fair to say airbrushing is not a fan of me, I'm not very good at it, I've tried it, I've done a couple of courses to learn how to do it, I've tried it myself, I'm just, just bad at it, I'm too impatient, uh, I, at corners when it comes to cleaning the, the airbrush and it ends up just ruining it. Rather than spending hundreds of pounds on something I know I'm going to crash, I'll stick to brush paint. Um, in this case, I probably am not going to go through every single paint I use just purely because I don't pay a lot of attention to specific brands or colours. I I have a, a basic method of painting where it is three tones, go mid-tone for the, for the first coat Depending on how well it's covered, you might need a second coat on this. Um, a highlight of a lighter version. In most cases here, all I've done is, I believe, added a bone color to the original base color. Though in some cases, I may actually have picked out a, a lighter tone. On the green, I used duck egg Vallejo to get that a little bit brighter uh, and then once that's all done we'll do a wash or a shade just to bring in some shadows potentially we might do another highlight after that how badly it's did the highlight and you should be able to see the step by step of that in this section coming up um, so oh, we're, we're still deciding what colour scheme we're going with this guy. As I said, I have four orc armies. I don't feel like this guy specifically stands out as fitting into one of them. Uh, he could go in any of them, but he doesn't really fit the theme on some of them. So my feral orcs, obviously a feral. This guy's got a high-tech arm. It makes sense. The bad moons in my army all tend to be heavily armoured, um, a lot of walkers, in fact it's a, a, a dread mob technically, so there's a lot of dreadnoughts, a lot of um, bumpers and things. The I have Death Skulls, who are all themed as if they are emulating humans, I was not doing that either, and then I got the Speed Freak. So about the only person the only ones that would kind of fit is the speed freaks but i he's about the same size as the war boss i already have and the loadout's pretty so it's not not a massive there's not a lot of point in doing it what i think i'll do is paint him up as a goth which i know 
I don't really have a goth army. What I do have is several units across the different armies that are painted in goth uh, colours. Like I've got a truck boys mob in the Speed Freaks army who have a lot more black and uh, bloodier weapons. Stuff. Just purely to give myself a bit of variety amongst armies. So I figured if this guy's done up as a goth, it opens the door for me to go off unit later and have this guy to leave. Uh, it's not got a name at the moment. So maybe if anyone's got any suggestions to what we could name him, um, put them in the comments. I'll, uh, I'll, once I read through them, have a look. While I was painting this guy, I did come up with a secondary sort of objective. Occasionally I like to go, hey, what if I did this when I'm painting a model that I've used, techniques I've used many, many times before. In this case, I decided I didn't really want any silver. I didn't want any gunmetal. Um, all of his metallic areas, I was go I decided I'd do bronze or gold. So what you'll probably notice while I'm painting this is I'm using quite a lot of army paint paints. I do like the army paint brand, especially with metallics. Uh, as we've got metallic sections here, basically what I've done is paint the areas I want metallics brown first, and then giving them a coat of the army paint bronze, uh, weapon bronze, just purely because the coat covering on metallics is always a little bit shaky. Find it slightly better on the army painter, but having that extra coat of brown just really makes sure it's sticking to the model properly. When I, as we're going goth and this guy is going to be wearing a lot of black, I, the way I tend to do my blacks is I'll paint a dark grey in this case, Vallejo dark rubber. I think it's Vallejo, yeah, Vallejo dark rubber from the and the Aces range, which once you, it, it's an almost black grey anyway, so when you give it a wash of black null oil or well, black wash, it goes, it, it gives that black effect without you having actually painted it black as well as giving you the highlight. Three. With this guy probably traveling with the B freaks for now, I have included armor plates. I am in a little bit the rest of the army. Uh, you can see where this bronze is coming on and how nicely the uh, covering of the brown after dried. Giving it that little bit of extra depth and pop without and making sure it covers properly. Like I said, the, the army painter paints metals are one of my favourite. As far as metal go, they love the way they go. We're using a, a slightly nicer brush than the ones I've used in previous. I, I know that there's going to be someone out there going, Did you see the state of his brushes? Yes, my brushes are hor horrible. However, they do the job. Um, I probably should take better care of them. I don't. And I've got quite good at making do with brushes that aren't in the tippy top condition but as I've I, I, I still can get results out of them for the most part so eh, it is what it is um I'm happy with them how they are these brushes I I tell you what they are but they've been so misused that most of them have the actual um logos either painted on or covered up or peeling away I feel like this one is probably a I think there's probably a lot of Citadel ones in here and this, there are some sable brushes that I've been using for a while yeah none of them are very good <laughs> none of them have been looked out after properly um, they're still, as you can see, they're still good enough for me to get in the highlights on things like the face, teeth, and pick out the details. Just, uh, just fine. It's not an issue. I, I once had a when I was working in a hobby shop. I once had a person who had 
they'd won a couple of golden demons and they were one of our regulars and he came in and saw me painting one day and was like what are you using to paint uh, and could not believe the state of the brush and he was like and you use this to paint these yeah yeah this is this is the brush I use um, he was like okay you're the only person I know who if I gave a model to and a chewed up cocktail stick could probably paint a display stand which I took as a <laughs> quite a nice compliment and a bit of a challenge so that's fine <laughs> we'll, we'll keep using my messed up brushes we're still as long as we're focusing we're all right uh, we've got the, the highlight skin highlights coming in fine um, after this I believe we're gonna start going into now a bit more of the details on the clothing going in with a gray highlight on the on the dark gray just to make it pop even more once I put that wash on. Now at this point I decided that the, the the black was a little bit too solid so we repainted armor on his the skull on his chest as a with with a, a light gray that I could do a white over the top of it later just to to give a bit of pop of color kind of has punisher vibes which I like You can see we're starting in with some of the washes. Um, I'm going black on the the clothing, the dark the dark grey clothing we've already done. Like I said, it's just a way of getting a simple highlight like for free. Essentially, with it, it just makes the armor look black with very very faint grey on the raised areas. Then I'm going to mix some of that black with a brown wash to go over the the bronze metal, give it an almost an oily look in the recesses and give it a bit more depth. Rest. Uh, as we've uh, already done a fair amount of the highlighting and a couple of washes on certain areas here, but we've got, we're going to go in and give the bone areas a bit of a bone dry brush. Um, not being too careful with this at the point. It's still gonna have a wash, it's gonna have a highlight, and I'm probably going to take out the extra here and we'll do a, a weathering wash, fade over areas. By now you've kind of got the gist of how I'm how I work. We've got the three coats, highlights and um, washes on various different areas only sort of the only sort of aside from that that isn't the standard that standard way of doing it is when we're adding weathering so with the bronze areas I've already done a couple of like brown washes whirly effects in there what we're gonna do is get a, a, a nice verdigree I've got a verdigree 
front of the Citadel Verdigree effect. What I'm going to do is, because it can be quite overpowering and I want it in the processes, I'm going to wash each of the areas that are bronze with a with just water. I'm going to put water on a brush and just coat each of the areas of the different uh, gaps. Get a bit of a dab dry, but then when we put the Nilac Oxide on it, it'll settle into the recesses and be dab off, coating absolute everything. But boys, I need to be. I'm waiting for that oxide to dry, we're just going to touch in a couple of extra details, the, the white patterning on the shoulder pads, and some of the, some of the little black tags and things as hanging off of them. Just going in and, and catching some of the, the, the more finer hidden bits and Uh, apart from a, a couple of uh, extra little details that I'm going to pick out later on, uh, we're, we're pretty much done with this main page. Now we're going to focus on the base. All my orcs are done up for desert war warfare. Um, I have no intention to repaint them for a, a different terrain, and actually I have a terrain board in the desert, so it works out quite nicely. What we're going to do is I'll use the same technique I use for all of the boys. Vallejo texture paint, I believe it's called brown earth, dabbed onto the, the base. Stuff doesn't really need any extra painting. It's it's good as it is. Though I do tend to dry brush it and add a wash to it just to give it a little bit of extra depth. We have access to so one of the things I've done. I have a little pack of basing materials, but which is, all that's in there is offcuts, like interesting offcuts or model pieces that are too small or weirdly shaped to as actual as part of the models. But they make if you paint them up. What I've done is I spray painted the whole lot silver, and then gave them a couple of Works of brown wash and orange washes for rust, and now I've got a whole collection of scrap metal on bases, doors, weapons, parts of guns. Uh, I've got screws, 
loads of stuff. There's any time I use green stuff, I tend to any leftover I have get turned into a sandbag or a pebble. They all end up in here as well, spray painted. Uh, I also found a, uh, a cactus. A little bit of fancy stuff. So whilst the, the base is drying, uh, I've gone back in with some bronze to re-pick out some of the might be a gold paint. Got some highlights on some of the flat areas. Just to again add a little bit more depth to that metal. Technique I use on some of the metal areas on this guy, uh, I mix some pure black paint with gloss medium and sort of stipple it onto areas where there would be like like armoured areas where the paint could have chipped off. What that does is it makes it look like you're seeing black paint with the chips showing through as the slightly darker grey or the lighter grey undercoat that isn't glossy. Uh, I use that quite a lot on my vehicles. It works just as well on this guy's helmet and a couple of his plates on his arms. You can see where... But what, what will happen is when the light hits it, it will still reflect as if it's still got its coat of varnish on it. Like they've uh, painted his armour in glossy paint but then not maintained it. So every chip shows up as a... As a a dull matte finish. Right. Now this is a paint I am gonna name my name because it's I, I've not found any other paint that does similar to this. Um P3 Brown Ink. So Oh, I don't know, brown, brown ink, that's, that's common as muck paint. Correct. However, this isn't brown ink. This is more of a, a reddish, a dark reddish brown, and it's glossy at the end. Which means it's perfect for blood effects and blood stains. It is just dark enough that, see it on the blade here, just dark enough that it reads as slightly dried blood. The glossiness makes it appear like it's sticky. Um, I use this a lot as a blood effect. Previously to this, I had to mix various different alcohol-based paints to get the, the blood. No longer have access to the old school nut wash that used to do the same job. Um, and this stuff is just magic. It, it's as good, if not slightly better, than culture. You can see here with a couple of touches, you definitely get that sort of blood spatter vibe. I use it in his mouth as well here. Just to redden up his tongue a bit more. With that, aside from attaching him to the base, and to be fair, I didn't show much of the actual basing process, um, he's more or less done. 
So, I hope you've enjoyed this first trip into my scrapyard. Uh, there's plenty of other stuff coming up that I've got planned. Um, sorry, there's been a bit of a delay on this one. Real life definitely got in the way this year. We'll um, hopefully be doing more than one a month anyway. Uh, without further ado, here's the finished product. Hopefully, if you've enjoyed, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.